You are listening to the Audacious Ecosystem, the show where we learn together what it takes to make an ecosystem great from the leaders in your organizations around us. Greetings, fellow interneted people. My name is Andre Doda, and today's guest is Dan Bugariu. Hello, Dan. Hi, Andre. Thank you for inviting me in your podcast. I'm happy to help you at the beginning of this trip. I know it's important, at, at least at, this, at the beginning, to, to have the support of uh, the people around you. Best thought, thoughts to you, to your current and your future audience. Thank you. Th thank you so very much, Dan. Deeply appreciate it. And on that note, we've known each other for the better half of a decade. It's been over five years now. Wow. Um, in that time, I've seen you wear multiple hats in your professional life, but maybe the audience hasn't gotten a chance to know everything, every one of the amazing things that you do. Would you mind sharing with our listeners, what do you do and what are the different organizations that you've been a part of over the years? Thanks for the first question. I'm not sure uh, that the answer will be very uh, special or spectacular, but Knowing you for more than five years, and that represents probably a one fifth or your entire life, is uh, is special. And thank you for <laughs> being together for such a long period of time. And I, uh, it's hope is just uh, the beginning. When you are asking about hats, my mind is going directly to the six thinking hats of um, Edward de Bono. It's one of the, the books I've read uh, probably more than 10 years ago and influenced the way I'm thinking, the empathy and multiple uh, thinking um, layered, which this model of uh, multiple hats is introducing to us. Um, when, when you are asking about health, I directly think about uh, the responsibilities behind those hats. And the responsibilities are directly connected, uh, connected with roles. So I, I will tell you about several roles I have in this life, at least the most important uh, roles, and also the context I'm involved in. Some of them, not all of them. Um, I think the most important role, hats and roles I have in this life is, is first I will put the parents of my daughters, 17 and 18. Uh, the second one, and, and I already feel <laughs> I, I missed the chance to put it on the first spot, is, is a, a, a good husband for my wife, um, friend, guide for those who decide that I can help them to. Um, start and to continue their journey. Um, I'm also a strategist, the business strategist for all the businesses I, I have co-founded, almost all of them. Um, the last but not least, maybe the, the most important is I'm doer for all the activities that makes a difference for um, uh, all the contexts actually I, which are connected with, uh, with these roles. If you ask me about uh, the organization, there are several behind in, in my past. There are several which are still part of my current uh, uh, activities. Uh, I will pick some of them. GoChana, which is an engine uh, investing platform, which is developing a valuable portfolio for business angels who are levering, leveraging their money, know-how and network. Another Business is four. Four is a co-work and maker space, uh, which is uh, also um, a design and uh, architect, uh, architecture office. Another one uh, I would say is um, community foundation. Uh, I'm I'm board member in community foundation from starting with 2017. And um, the community foundation is actually developing um, the um, um, the habit of philanthropy and also supporting NGOs to develop those projects which makes a difference for local community. And last but not least, probably we will discuss more about uh, uh, this last context which 
is directly connected with developing um, digital urban ecosystems is Upgrade My City, which uh, is uh, a program which is developing those projects that influence the most developing of urban ecosystem in a participatory and sustainable way. Well, first of all, that's a lot. And just wrapping your mind around every single, well, company and especially industry that you're a part of, that's a very, very diverse skill set. And your knowledge is actually quite interesting given that you have the awareness of quite a few industries. Now, between MemIQ and GrowChannel and Faber and the different industries that come along, and especially Upgrade My City, you've garnered a specific interest in ecosystems, uh, be they physically or digital. Where does that interest actually come from? Well, it's a tough question. Uh, when you're putting it like this, I, I really don't remember an exact moment when thing, things happen. Pro probably, maybe I forgot about uh, the, the specific moment. But what I know for sure is the decision was probably influenced by this confluence between skills, um, the things which uh, I... Um, I'm motivated about probably the reason I'm, I'm doing things, but also things uh, um, which makes me feel in a, in a special way. And, and this confluence between the skills, the reasons, the feelings, and probably the results, uh, arise this decision to allocate part of my time to digital and urban ecosystem development because I'm not interested just in developing a particular one. As you observe, I'm part of uh, Grow Channel Music, which is an angel investing platform. And you could think that I'm more interested and in, for sure I'm interested a lot in developing the tech startups ecosystem. But beside this ecosystem, I, I was connected with it other urban ecosystems like you know, formal education, governance, creative communities, tech and innovation, mobility, uh, philanthropy ecosystem, and uh, a little bit uh, cultural, digital art ecosystem. Probably the projects the people I've met in, in the last 15 years, the results, the complexity of this context of developing an urban ecosystem and um, the, the fact that the results are, are not sh showing in, in a very, very short period of time, you have to wait, uh, like in parenting, <laughs> for five, um, maybe 10, 15 years. Um, all the things probably have influenced my decision to allocate an important part of my life in this direction. And I think you made quite an interesting insight right there regarding the fact that your interest actually comes from the confluence of skills and the ability to even empathize and be able to wear uh, multiple hats multiple of those six hats that we referred to earlier. And um, I think uh, that's a great analogy. Um, parenting is a very good analogy to the idea of digital ecosystem creation. And if I may, I'd love to enter that context just a bit. Um, I'm not a father by any means. Uh, but from what I know, when, when a, a baby comes into the world, it does not come with a manual. You don't really have an instruction manual on that. Um, just the same way, there's not exactly an instruction manual on how to build digital ecosystems. But we can assume that usually it would be a smarter idea to start from a problem that you're trying to solve. You've gone through this process 
a few times. Um, and I would like to know what's your process for finding and assessing the problems that people have and what are the steps, the bird's eye view on the steps that you take in order to go from problem to MVP? Considering the long-term development, probably the comparison with parenting is a good one, but for, I, I don't, I, I, I would, I would not say for sure, but if I'm looking inside of me, I, I don't think I've treated the parenting uh, in, in a similar way as we treat uh, organizations development or ecosystem development. In, in, indeed, when you are developing an organization, an ecosystem or an ecosystem, it's essential to clarify the challenge, the problem you are trying to solve. For parenting, uh, it's more about what kind of seeds you would prefer to put and let your children choose which seeds are the most uh, appropriate for the journey they will decide sometime in their life, probably between 12, 14 and um, uh, 20, to, um, uh, to follow in their life. Uh, coming back to uh, the, the problem, I think this step is essential. And you see uh, in, in Romania and probably in other countries, I, I'm thinking mostly of uh, Central and Eastern European countries, we have a challenge by clarifying, uh, validating correctly the problem. Uh, the educational system, our history, have de developed inside us a lot of skills or muscles which are uh, specific to, to experts, Do, good professionals, but experts. And the muscle, the, the skills, and, the, and mostly the attitude, the mindset of an entrepreneur, and I associate um, ecosystem development more, more to an entrepreneur than to, um, to an expert. They need to understand very closely the problem they are trying to solve. Otherwise, and I'm, I'm looking at around 500 um, pitch decks each year, and I observe this tendency of not just Romanian, but a lot of uh, good engineer, engineers and, and technicians which are starting. And there's a good reason, reason that a, 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 um, a good engineer is a starting um, a startup. They are in love in building solutions and don't understand being wrong. I've done it. I, I, I failed not just one time, but uh, a lot of times by doing this in, in my, not my entire life, in, in, in the last 10 years. So even if you realize that it's, this approach is, uh, is not the best one, the way we um, our design by the society and uh, by probably our passions uh, make us fail quite often in, in this um, uh, approach of building solutions and product but not solving solutions and not solving problems. So if I will have to um, answer directly to the, these questions, um, exactly like you are trying to solve a problem in a startup uh, approach. It's uh, essential to do it similar in an ecosystem. They are quite different. In an ecosystem, you have more a confederation than uh, one control and one decision point. And this makes that uh, the, the development and the approach is, is of course, more complex. But um, if you thought if you are discussing with a stakeholder from a specific ecosystem, you identify a lot of problems. All of them are identifying these kind of problems. The fact that uh, all of them should work on a common mission. For example, if it's um, tech startups uh, ecosystem, they, they all should work 
to, to help startups to, to evolve, to grow as fast as possible. If you are discussing about the educational ecosystem, uh, we all are, which are part of the educational ecosystem, we all should work to design those um, educational paths which are helping the, the, the students to um, uh, evolve and succeed in their personal and professional and social life. And I, I could continue. So we have a common mission, but we are using different approaches, we have different expectations, we have different skills. And for sure, we don't have a common way to discuss and put these things together in order to get the, the, the most of that ecosystem. We have a huge cost of opportunity which is lost each year, year by year. And uh, this, uh, this is a pity that you could do more and each stakeholders understand, knows that we can do more together. Um, of course, in, in an efficient way and with a systemic approach by um, aligning our specific objective and understanding our common mission, um, building, uh, choosing the right metrics which are representing the evolution of that ecosystem and actually are also important for us as one type of a stakeholder from that uh, ecosystem. Oh, the first step will be to discuss with all the stakeholders in the ecosystem and validate the problems uh, they have and the generic problems the ecosystem have. The lack of co coherence, the lack of uh, common um, direction, um, the, 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 the fact that uh, we do things in parallel and we don't uh, have a benefit of working together and I, I could continue. Interesting. One thing that I took away from what you said um, is the idea that in a stakeholder group we might be attempting to solve the exact same problem. For example, education for a specific stakeholder, for a particular persona. And the way in which we actually go about solving that specific problem might differ drastically from um, one operator to another, uh, from one entrepreneur to another. There isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to do it, as long as you are actually addressing the problem and you're not creating a problem from thin air to uh, uh, to fit your solution which you are creating um, so that's the main thing to focus on in the mvp stage but let's say we did get a validation we did get an mvp and we are certain that we started from a problem and it is actually solving that problem whatever we're building now we are thinking about investing a lot more resources into this digital platform that we are building. What are the first three things you usually focus on when designing that digital ecosystem, which has already been validated? First of all, I would like to appreciate uh, and, and validate the fact that when we are discussing about ecosystem, uh, some of us are trying to solve and to do things that uh, people are referring, especially to the stakeholders of that ecosystem doesn't need. You have to understand that uh, even there is no um, uh, systemic approach that an ecosystem will develop. Having a systemic and conscious approach will reduce the cost of opportunity. In other words, will make us get results faster and build capacity for delivering those results faster. And that could be a huge value you are actually offering to your community by letting, helping an ecosystem to, to develop faster and become part of the identity of the competitive advantage of your community, of your city. Now, going back to, to those three things which makes a difference, I would appreciate that could be a trap to give an answer which is directly addressing the 
top three, top five. Why? Because um, context is, is the king. And for each ecosystem, and even for the same ecosystem, if you are discussing about that ecosystem in different uh, locations, you could have different approaches and, and different uh, priorities. Finding these top three things which would help you to build success in that ecosystem could uh, be a trap and not helping you at all. But first, I would focus on stakeholders on boarding, onboarding in order to get their buy-in and build the trust inside this group of stakeholders. Without it, I don't see a real progress. And I, I, I know a particular situation, I, I will not uh, uh, point in a specific direction or I say a specific name, but with strong stakeholders, which have the responsibility to develop um, one urban ecosystem and they doesn't succeed in, in this mission because they are not they have not win the trust and buy-in of the main stakeholders from that ecosystem so building the trust I, I think is essential and probably the first step Another focus I observed that's important to have when you are starting to develop uh, an urban and hopefully digitized uh, ecosystem is um, building a working group which has a specific uh, cadence, a rhythm to meet and to discuss. And um, of course, you, you have to organize very well this uh, uh, working groups and separate between the strategic discussion and uh, operational uh, discussion on topics. But if you have the meeting in your calendar, let's say monthly, uh, the chance to help the ecosystem evolve in, in a conscious, sustainable, continuous way, of course, will increase. The third one will be to have an alignment. And, and I think that the, the second one and the third one could be, uh, could be interchanged. It, it depends. Um, it depends on stakeholders' expectation, how they know each other, if they ha have worked on these topics before, or is just the first, is the first time when you are meeting and we are working together, together to, to develop that ecosystem. The, the, the third focus I, I, I will address, the third, the third priority or direction I will address is the one which align the interests, the expectations and the directions, the objectives, the metrics we are following as a group. So um, normal things like um, vision, mission, principle of doing things, um, um, generic objectives, uh, uh, indicators, metrics, metrics are essential. We will probably, I hope we will discuss about this, this part of ecosystem development. And uh, what are those low hanging fruits? And I, I think I will put on, on the fourth place the, the results you have to deliver in the first two years. You have to deliver results, but it's not enough. You have to deliver results which are uh, relevant to the ecosystem development. And you also have to deliver capacity because on the long term, the results will be influenced a lot on the capacity you are developing in the same time with those results which are directly addressing the status, uh, the maturity, uh, I don't know, the, the, the value that ecosystem is producing for their stakeholders. I, I will stop at this three, four, but I will emphasize that uh, context is the king and you have to analyze and understand the, state, the, the, the specific uh, uh, ecosystem and more specifically 
the expectations and the maturity of that ecosystem? I think you noted an exceptionally interesting list right here, but one thing that really stand out stand out stands out to me is the first thing and the fact that you put it as the first thing, um, not starting with a vision or a mission, but rather starting with a stakeholder onboarding, with creating the trust, with understanding the expectations and attempting to go around the table, just see where the expectations are at. And I think that's a fascinating insight, just to, this to point out, that before we even attempt to do anything else, before we attempt to create a vision or think about what needs to grow, we do need to create the onboarding for the relevant stakeholders to actually align with um, what we are trying to build and align what we are trying to build, especially with the needs of the stakeholder group. And I think that's a valuable insight to take away. But regarding the things to do, that I do agree, context, context is obviously key. Um, definitely having the onboarding for the stakeholders group, essential. Maybe the most important out of anything you could ever do. But there are things usually which are not necessarily context specific. I know you're a fan, um, more specifically, of principles and frameworks, and you did coin uh, previously the idea of the six hats, um, which exceptional. I just want to ask you, what relevant frameworks do you know with regards to the evolution levels of digital ecosystems? Let's choose a structure. I'm not sure if I'm a fan, but yeah, in, in order to, in, indeed, in order to, to get some results, I feel the need to organize things in a specific way. <laughs> um, but sometimes too much structure probably is not helpful for the people around. Uh, you, know, uh, you need to first open the door and, and get trust and have fun. And, um, drink maybe a glass of wine from time to time with those um, stakeholders uh, in order to connect with them, to uh, buy their interest and uh, um, even build a friendship. If you do that, probably the structure will, uh, uh, will be more successful. Otherwise, if you structure, if you systemize things too early, uh, if you generate complexity, even models are, are created to simplify complex things. But if you are trying to use too much, too many models and too, too much structure, I, I think you have uh, the risk to fail in the relation with those, those, those stakeholders. But nevertheless, let, 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 let's, uh, let's answer to your question. Let, let's take just another one. And I feel that on alignment and planning, there are a lot of frameworks and, and models. And we are using, you know that we, we are using uh, these principles and these mental models. I, I'm thinking of OKRs and uh, SWOT and PESTEL and CMM, uh, Capability Maturity Model, and uh, IAP2 uh, model for evaluating the participation maturity, but also principles like first principle or compound interest, or there are so many, you will have actually this challenge to choose the right one in the right moment for the right context and uh, the results we are trying actually to achieve in, in uh, that particular moment. I think you pointed something out exceptionally well, and the th even more important thing I take away from everything you've said previously is that there's plenty of models, there's plenty of frameworks, but the tool needs to be used for the right job. 
And even more importantly, a conversation I had with a very interesting project manager a few weeks ago, um, the tool is just the tool. If you follow the instruction manual and you do this specifically because now this is what it said at point 76, you're kind of doing it wrong. Trust is much more important than just following the guidelines. Uh, those are just tools for us to help build whatever it is we are building. We don't necessarily need to stick to the T, uh, to um, what the manual says that we should do in this specific situation. It's just a tool, and it needs to adapt to the job that we want to uh, get done with it, not necessarily the other way around. They're just tools, and they help us accomplish what we want to accomplish. It's not systems that exist out in the world. It's just a tool that will help us accomplish whatever it is we want to build. And speaking of building, I know that you like this term, um, to architect. Uh, and I know you prefer to use it not only about the, regarding the physical world, but also regarding the digital world. Um, you specifically um, use the term architecting solutions, uh, which I find really interesting. Um, through this lens, what do you see? What does ecosystem architecture mean? And also, why is it needed? I'm trying not to be in love with a specific tool or a specific concept or a specific word, even if I'm not succeeding all the time, we, without knowing uh, we are using with a higher frequency uh, specific words or specific um, tools or concept we, we know better. But at, at least we are responsible to be conscious about it. Otherwise, there is a famous anti-pattern which is coming from um, IT industry. We are calling this anti-pattern the golden hammer. And uh, the golden hammer is uh, it's, it's saying that if, if you have a hammer in, in your hand, uh, everything around you will look, look in a specific way. You don't want that. If you are in love with a specific concept or a tool, you tend to use it even in, in the wrong places, in the wrong context. Uh, and this is available not just for tools, but also for words. Sure, architecting solution is relevant uh, for an ecosystem, but more important is to understand that it, it's, of course, different when we are discussing of urban ecosystem compared with when we are discussing about uh, software development. And um, I will prioritize other things than building the solution and the platform. As I've said before, probably the, the, the solution or the platform will, will, will came the last. And sure, when, when I use in uh, that period of time when I my main responsibility was to architect solution for different um, uh, corporations. Um, the solution was also in the end, after you uh, understand very clear what are the specification and the client, the customer expectation, the customer problem you are trying to solve. It's similar for ecosystem. First, you will have to uh, create the relation. I already told about it and, and the, the group and align on a specific destination and uh, way to, to go um, in, in that direction. Probably in the first two, three years, I will not uh, systemize too much, or at, at least I will systemize after uh, we have tested several different processes. If you systemize uh, too early, you have the risk to to kill the relations and also kill the multiple options. Or you, all, you you don't know about them. So I will favorize a lean approach in, in which you actually test the fastest as possible, uh, as many options as possible. And after you have validated those options, then I will start to systemize 
and probably this will start to happen in after two three years of uh, working together as a as a group as i told you is a, is a marathon and not not, not a sprint so i will um, say that architecting solution is important but also important is to iterate very quick and and Architects should balance between these two different approaches. Actually, I think this is the main responsibility of an architect to, to manage correctly the, um, the different part of the spectrum, different divergent things. Probably in any context you will have an architect, this could be the main responsibility of that architect to, to manage uh, things which normally you don't see together in order to have the dot results which is um, uh, serving all the stakeholders in, in, uh, in, in that, uh, that context, in that ecosystem. That's a really interesting answer. And on that note, I'm actually intrigued by that answer, specifically because when doing my research on like your digital presence, um, only one word stuck out, the word architect. It's everywhere and I double checked, uh, even the LinkedIn tagline is architect in growth. Uh, and I'm especially in intrigued by that because when uh, thinking about the work that you do, uh, usually, and just from my own experience working alongside you, uh, I took architecting less as combining different things that you need to reshape in order to fit together and more about being thoughtful about the third step in the process that you are gonna do and making sure that we are aware of that and from the very start we are actually intentional we are very thoughtful in how we approach the development of whatever it is that we are doing whatever it is that we are building. Uh, that was my perceived view of uh, what I understood from uh, your use, your general use of uh, the idea of architecting. But I, I think your suggestion that obviously you have to move fast and you have to iterate is especially relevant. But I would ask you specifically, when building a digital platform, when on the spectrum would you find yourself? So again, we are in this context of already being validated. We are certain that we are solving a problem. Where would you find yourself on the spectrum between um, architecting something, between being extremely thoughtful about all the problems that will arise, and between moving fast and breaking things at all costs? Where do you see yourself on the spectrum? And where would you suggest people uh, attempt to find themselves on this spectrum when building a digital platform? Yeah, for sure, in this period of my life, in a different uh, uh, place or combination compared with um, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, actually, the, uh, of course, each journey, each um, professional evolution has its own stages. and. Uh, there was a stage indeed in, in which uh, I prioritized this part of uh, wisdom, of mm -hmm. understanding uh, different layers, different perspective, uh, uh, comparing different scenarios and uh, evaluating metrics and data in order to uh, wisely, at least what that was in, in my mind at that time. Uh, choose uh, the right options. Mm -hmm. Probably never the best option because uh, it, it's hard to to choose uh, the perfect one. But at, at least to not have um, a too big gap between the perfect solution and what to have chosen. Do you think there's that, a perfect choice? No, I don't think. I don't yeah. think. But for um, the discussion you can use uh, this reference even if it's impossible to probably to achieve it uh, achieve it but it, it's good to have in mind such a perfect solution in order to be able to 
calculate opportunity cost. And that was probably 10 years ago. Now I'm not using a similar approach. Uh, I'm even more far from this idea of perfect solution. Uh, I, I think it is, uh, is a trap to, to look for the perfect solution because most of the time you're looking for a perfect solution inside yourself and inside just several people around you. And it's not possible to get the perfect solution with j just with several people around you or just with your mind. Or talking about um, uh, statistics, is actually uh, this could happen in if it happens it will happen in in a very 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 few context if i'm looking today at uh, my approach is it's more more uh, connected with uh, the startup um, area and context and which lean approach is uh, the father of all approaches and agile and lean and incremental approach uh, is giving the possibility to um, be skeptical on any uh, affirmation you make and transform them in hypothesis and validate or invalidate those hypothesis by acting somehow. So the act part become much more relevant for the architect uh, activity. Act activity is about planning and doing things maybe in a specific order, but not about doing things just by yourself and your mind. <laughs> for sure you will not get the expected results doing things in this way. Well, I'm quite often this period of time uh, validating things and that means the doer part not just the thinker part of an architect is becoming more important compared with uh, my activity in 15 years ago because by doing things you know that it's an important part of your activity doing those things which are, are influencing actually your um, later decisions are essential for your final architecture. One thing that stood out from what you just said was um, the idea of skepticism, both in general, and the fact that you refer to entrepreneurship and especially to the lean approach as being the father of all approaches. In that sense, are you skeptical of the lean approach? And is there a correct way to be entrepreneurial? You catch me on this. Um, uh, yes, my, the, the way I thought uh, this idea was not, not, not the best one. I don't find that uh, it's actually contradictory with the idea I've said before that I'm, I'm trying not to be in love with a specific tool or idea or framework. So I think the lean approach is, uh, is a good one. Of course, it has some limitations and uh, um, sometimes you lose by using um, lean approach and not doing a very professional job and uh, finding um, reasons to do things which are not good enough uh, with this idea in mind that you validate things uh, step by step. So there are contexts in which the Lean approach is probably not uh, the best you can choose. But um, beside those specific approaches, <laughs> for example, you, you are building a um, rocket engine. Uh, of course, it's about the iteration there, but if you have to test the rocket engine is around 25 to 30,000 euros. You have to model, you have to calculate before, or you have to do a lot of things before throwing away 
30,000 uh, euros. So, translating quite literally, uh, the lean approach could not help you to get the uh, best results in your approach. And uh, this is actually the job enough of an architect to balance between the fast approach, the incremental approach, and the, the slow thinking, the unbiased, the um, um, met, the statistical way approach. In that case, there's no perfect thing to do. There's only good things you might want to try to do. And obviously you have to um, do something, see if it worked, what came out of it, evaluate it, and then get to a conclusion. So in that case, you have to go from the things that work. So actually try something, and I see if it works. When building an ecosystem, especially digital ecosystem, but ecosystem of all sorts, there's mainly two components, arguably, but there's mainly two components that we focus on. There's the social network, so what are the stakeholders in our ecosystem, how do they interact, who's uh, the loudest voice, who's actually being followed, who has actual power in that group of people, not necessarily the authority, but rather maybe an influencer. So there's the social network and also the social systems. That may mean incentive system, that may mean punishment systems for particular behaviors which you don't want to see on the platform. From your own experience now, from the things that you've tried in terms of creating social systems on digital platforms beforehand, what have been the most relevant, the most uh, fruitful incentive systems which you've implemented uh, in digital ecosystems so far? I would say, and I probably be saying that I, I'm connecting this idea with what was being discussed before, is that I'm I'm looking to do things in a specific order. And I would say not me actually. It's, it's when you discuss about uh, ecosystem, it's not just about you. It's about a group which is taking the responsibility to facilitate the development of that ecosystem. It's not a one single person job. Actually, it's a risk to have just one single person which is coordinating, um, orchestrating the ecosystem development. You, you need such a person, but this is this is more a facilitator and you need to have at least two, three facilitators to have that confederate approach, not a single point, uh, a single leader approach. Uh, when you do things like this, you probably um, solve or I don't know, uh, focus on, as we discussed before, on, on certain things in, in a specific order. For some people, and the yeah, trust and culture and way of working and um, alignment and things like this. After that, on results, after results on um, systematizations in the system in order to get sustainability and, and uh, not have the sensation each year that you, you are um, taking the story from scratch. And uh, probably later, but it's probably present also in, on, in all stages, the, the maturity of uh, the ecosystem. If you're discussing specifically, because the, the first step is the most important one, and this is the way, uh, the reason I, I'm calling people first. By not developing, you're developing the, the stakeholders group. For sure, you are considering and you're analyzing and you know about their behavior profile. At least a good, uh, good facilitator with 
will do this work and uh, will know how to approach a specific person at least in the first period of time because after one two three four years the the culture of the group will dictate actually the the way we behave inside the group but in the first weeks first months uh it's important to understand the expectation the the behavior or a specific strong profile inside your stakeholder group in order to know how to manage it uh, how to introduce it how to ask for the permission how to get uh, how to, to give um, recognition all the things you are probably using in order to balance the variables in a group which are at the beginning not pointing in, in the same direction the skills are not complementary because we don't know how we complement in our skills we don't have enough respect for the person in front of us because we don't we didn't work before with, with that person so we, we, we have the responsibility to build this um, respect and you build respect by uh, recognizing a specific competence which is different from what you have in the other person which is present in the group um, well, this kind of things so being uh, aware of the fact that uh, it's it's a work you have to do with that group in order to get the group from point a a in, in which they don't know very well one uh, to another to the point they know each other they trust each other they respect each other they have results and they understood that they have a common mission and they accomplish much more uh, results and have a much bigger capacity together and not separately it is actually a really thoughtful answer the more i think about it uh, especially um, the idea of the facilitator uh, the idea that it shouldn't be just one concentrated entity that actually does everything but rather a decentralized network it should be more dare i say anti-fragile the more people that are actually facilitators within an ecosystem especially digitally the more it doesn't matter if just one individual one individual fails the network of individuals is resilient and will continue to live even if i don't know you happen to take exactly. a week off or a month off exactly or, uh, so um, which is especially important because that is also the first thing to usually fail and the first maybe most relevant reason why digital ecosystems usually fail because the network doesn't continue to be resilient so there's no anti-fragility anymore so it does fail with this context in mind given that digital ecosystems do fail and it does happen no matter how big you are no matter how big google is it can still fail uh, if people don't continue to uh, adopt uh, its ecosystem for example when you have already built a digital ecosystem in order to ensure that you are not on the wrong path we've established that there's no specific right path but I'm pretty sure we can agree that there may be paths, paths that won't take us to where we want to go. Um, when we attempt to measure things to make sure that we are on a right track, not necessarily the right track, what are the metrics that matter? What do you actually matter? What do you actually measure in digital ecosystems? I will discuss about metrics and data an entire week. It's the subject I probably lo love the most. Uh, because without data, we don't know. And um, 
the single way to see and to prove that your your facilitated ecosystem is actually evolving is to um, have a look at data. Um, there are so many consultants and um, mathematicians and um, managers um, which are emphasizing the importance of the metrics when you are developing an organization or, or an ecosystem, an urban ecosystem. Choosing the right metrics is, uh, could, could make the difference between failure and, and success. And you, you need to choose the metrics which comes the most depending on the maturity phase of that ecosystem. Um, first year, I've told you already before, it is important to get the results and to, to have those relevant results, but which are low hanging fruits. Uh, the fact that you have a working group and uh, you meet regularly and you have a common mission and objectives and you have uh, you've done a project together and you understood uh, you understand things better after one year than it was uh, before uh, our great achievements if you consider this in the fifth or you know, 10th year, for sure, the, the achievement is, is not so spectacular anymore. I will say that there are two, three main ideas. One, you having metrics is, um, is essential. Without them, there is no, um, conscious development of an ecosystem and you will fail after two three years because you will not uh, get visible traction and uh, the stakeholders will uh, lose their interest in this activity. The second is to stay aside of vanity metrics. How many events you have organized, how many um, money you have spent on a specific activity or how uh, many relation, relations you have built or how many hours you have spent discussing uh, with um, potential uh, of, um, with uh, startups with uh, high potential that could be some metrics good metrics if you find the correlation between them and what you actually are trying to develop in that ecosystem and if i use this example maybe the the uh, most important uh, metric for a tech startup ecosystem will be the valuation or the growth ratio of the startups or um, the number of people which are positively influenced by the existing existence of the startups in, in uh, that ecosystem. It depends. We, the stakeholders are responsible to choose what makes uh, um, sense for the specific context. These are two. Three, <laughs> measure them at least uh, once or twice, twice will be better each year uh, and uh, choose those activities which are influencing on short period of time the metrics which comes for your ecosystem. So choose those uh, investments which gives you the best return of interest. I think we can sum up that answer with the phrase nobody loves which is it depends um, but I think there's quite a few lessons to do take away from this uh, uh, from what you just said um, without measuring we don't have anything if we don't measure it it doesn't grow we can't be sure what is happening so measuring will always be important now it depends on what exactly it is that we are measuring because we might be measuring vanity metrics which are actually not useful and obviously make sure that you're measuring the right thing 
there's no playbook, there's no universal way of doing things. So there's obviously a trial and error that needs to happen, or at least some architecture that needs to happen in order to make sure that we are measuring the North Stars. But let's say we did decide what is our North Star, met what are our North Star metrics, we did decide what it is the most essential thing to keep an eye out on, what then? We know for certain what it is that we're looking at, that's great, but how often do I measure that and how often should I be worried about the metrics that I'm looking at? Uh, should I measure it weekly? Should I measure it monthly? Should I worry about the fact that this week I, don't, I didn't get enough traffic? Uh, how would you decide how often to measure and how often to make decisions based on the measuring measurements that you do get? Normally for a startup context, you measure things uh, weekly, even daily. For ecosystem, which are long-term, um, have a long-term term approach pattern, I will not measure things with such high frequency. We don't have resources. Like actually, this is one challenge um, ecosystem developing are facing: the fact that they need to find their sustainability model because uh, the city or other partners are not immediately support such an activity without seeing uh, the, the, their benefits of doing that. It's a it's, um, decision at the community level, at the formal education ecosystem level, all the stakeholder should agree that these are important metrics or variables and they should start somehow to measure them in order to close the gap between these two sides. Um, so I know it's not very low. I don't like this uh, depends, but it depends. <laughs> Translation, there is no right answer and you won't really find the right answer. So it is a process of iteration upon iteration until you just find what works and what works for now. Because in two years time, in three months time, in six years time, it will likely not be the same things that you're measuring, the same things that actually do bring you success. And also you're not gonna be dealing with the same problems uh, later on. Uh, so it's obviously, uh, all of it is just an iteration process. And uh, I think iteration is at the forefront of everything that stands to uh, evolve out of a digital ecosystem. And I think, this conversation was an iteration on previous conversations which we've had, and it was an absolutely fantastic conversation which we've had. And on this show, we do have a tradition before you leave. I have to ask you something. If you had the power to remove just one boundary, no questions asked, you could do it tomorrow. You could remove just one boundary in your ecosystem. Which one will it be and why? First idea which is crossing my mind, it, it will be the, the long time to get the results and wisdom, maturity of that ecosystem. But I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's good that you need time. It, it's, it's a rule. I, I find reasons that you need time to get maturity. So I, I will not choose that. If I will have to choose, not sure if it's a barrier, but if it's, it's a stop we have now, I will choose to remove the lack of courage we as a humankind have to, to go long-term, to choose those projects which are probably continuing after our lifetime. Those projects which gives you 
results or return of interest or impact or benefits. Which are received maybe after 20 or 30 years. I think if you will have this courage in the community, then uh, we will start uh, projects which are long time, which brings long time value to humankind. Yeah, I like it. I also like it and I always love the answers that come from this question. Uh, this one was especially interesting and come to think of it, yes, it does actually take courage to not just think about the results you'll get tomorrow or in a week or in a month, but rather to think well on a long term. And by long term, I mean on a long term, maybe 20 to 30 to 40 years and even past um, our lifetimes. That's That does take courage. And it does take courage to play that role and to be the, dare I say, the facilitator for that to happen. And for that, uh, we do appreciate the work that you do uh, in the ecosystem that you're part of and the fact that you do have that courage and uh, you do actually uh, have the community, have that courage to think on the long term. I did not consider myself um, uh, to, to be um, to respecting uh, this pattern. If you know, we we both have doubts. At least I have so many doubts, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, I'm I feel that uh, the doubts are increasing, not decreasing over time. So there are a good period of times and not so good period of times when you are questioning, questioning yourself and uh, your motivation, your reasons, and uh, you ask yourself if you would like to stay more or actually do things which are generate results, which are more vis visible and with, with a higher speed. speed. So uh, I, I think uh, probably the courage is not when uh, it's easy to choose, but probably when it's not easy to choose a journey. Dan, this was an absolutely exceptional conversation. I thank you so very much for taking the time to have this call. And I thank you so very much for all the ideas that you shared with us and all the insights that you offered over, um, over this conversation, which absolutely, it was absolutely insightful. Now, Dan, where would you like to send people? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sometimes the mind is uh, uh, is playing uh, with us. Though <laughs> I will not tell you uh, the, the the first answer which come come came to my mind. Probably <laughs> it was connected with uh, the answer before related to courage. I, I'm not sure. I will not send them to an organization. I will not send them to a place. I will not send them to a web page or a book or a moment in time. I will say that this 200 and around 50 years ago, Adams. Smith told us that we will get results by being interested on our personal and direct benefit. And the action, if the action of all the prayers in, in uh, economic market, probably even in a social context, are driven by, uh, by this principle we all together will um, will evolve and we will get uh, prosperity. Prosperity. Around seventy years ago, John Nash proved that this is not um, totally true, and it's okay to follow your benefit in your own interest. But if you want prosperity for the for for the whole community. 
even human kind, you, you have to look also to the benefit of the group. Around 10 years ago, because we saw the result of not taking care about the environment, um, other thinkers told us that it's it's not enough to take care about yourself and uh, by the group. You have to understand that the environment must be protected, it must be represented in our politics and our decisions. And there is a, a small interval in which we will have prosperity and the environment will uh, serve us on long term. Why I've told this is that we observed an evolution on, on the way our looking of the things around us and what gives us prosperity in, in the long term. And uh, if I will have to send people or have a call to action for them, I would say that, uh, that when you do things for higher good, for the benefit of humankind, of your community, um, automatically you will be part, you will get those benefits and uh, your prosperity will come from the fact that it's not just about you, but the prosperity and those benefits are for the entire group. Um, I think if we change, the things around us will change, a positive change, of course. And so. I will not send people, but I will say to your listen, listener, listeners, to your audience, that it's a good moment to start today, to think about it. And if it's attractive, of course, do it. I think that is actually a very, <clears throat> dare I say, courageous answer. And uh, I think your call to action is very appropriate for the time that we find ourselves in. And uh, I think it's uh, specifically thoughtful to do take action, not only for the interest of the self, but rather for the interest of the global good, of the common good. And with that being said, Dan, I thank you so, so very much for taking the time for this conversation. It was lovely to catch up and I genuinely appreciate the time that you took to be here and uh, share with everybody uh, the lessons that you've learned. I genuinely appreciate it, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Andre, for having me. Best thoughts to, your, to you and your audience. And with that being said, until the next time, stay connected, interneted people. See ya. You've been listening to the Audacious Ecosystem, the show where you learn together what it takes to make an ecosystem great from the leaders in your organizations around us.